said it once that we need to remember that Hashem, the Creator, He was here before the creation. Before that He gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, before that we inherit the Holy Land, before that He obligated us, He was here. Before that the first man been created, before of heaven, before of the sky, before of the sun, before of before of, of the, the, the thousands and thousands of years before of creation, Hashem was here. The Creator was here. This world is a temporary world. This world is limited in measurements, in sizes, in weights, in shapes, in colors, in smells, in all kinds of limitations. It's under the borders of time, all kinds of scales. But the truth is not like that. The world is called Alma de Shikra, the world of light. So whenever you think that you're late, so someone just tricked you. Every time that you enjoy certain smell or certain color, so someone just fooled you. Every time that you prefer some kind of food on another, so you just miss the point. Because in the world of truth, there are no limitations. There are no differences. There are no dividings. It's all one. It's all endless. And a person needs to... to get used to that. Because after 120 years, when a person finishes his job here, so... So he's going back to, to the world of truth. And in the world of truth, he won't be under all of those dividings and separations. And he will see the truth that it was all one. So all of his opinions about people and all of his thoughts about properties and houses and money and things that are occupied in our mind here in this world, will be his disgrace, will be his shame, will be his lack of understanding of the truth. It will show him how far he was from the Creator. That the Creator is not belong to this world. This world is not hosting the Creator. The Creator hosts this world. This world is is nothing in the eyes of, of the Creator. It's tiny. It's a it's a it's a it's like dust in the wind. Behibaraam, it's written. That the Creator with his breath he created the world. It's a thought that he had <coughs> that he wanted to reveal his mercy, his kindness. And now we are running in circles like mice in a trap. The thought of Hashem was to do something and kach ala and that's how he thought and that's it. And he moved on with his thoughts. Now we are under that imagination of fake reality that calls this world. But this world does not really exist. You feel and you smell, and you think, and what do you mean? <laughs> Here it is. But it's Alma de Shikra, it's the world of light. And when your eyes are open to the world, and you look around, so it's already 
it becomes to be impossible for you to connect yourself to the world of truth because you are in the place that your mind is. If now you're thinking about something, something is bothering you and you're terrified and you're lost and you're confused because of that thought, so you're over there. People are going to ask you, hey, where are you? What's going on? Where are your thoughts? Because you are where your thoughts are. If you're scared, so you are in the eyes of your vision, and you're in the eyes of your mind, you're over there, dealing with this situation, and what I'm going to do, and if he will come, and if he won't come, and if he will knock, and if he won't knock, and, and what's going to happen, and if they're going to call, not going to call, you're over there. Why? Because your mind is over there. So as long as your eyes are open, and you're looking at the world, so you are over there, in this world of light. So you're not in the world of truth. You're not connected to the truth. So what do you need to do? A person must close his eyes and focus in infinity, in eternity. When you're looking to this world, so you see around you houses and trees and clouds and, 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 and candles, and cars, and people, and opportunities, and jobs, and options, and roads, and, and, and many, many particles that every one of them got that power to distract your thoughts from infinity, from the unity of all the particles that are mixing one in each other and losing their shape in the sea of, of endless, in the sea of wisdom. That the sea of wisdom is teaching you on the existence of the Creator that He is beyond this world. So now what are you going to do with that? If when you open your eyes, immediately you lose your connection to the truth, immediately you have people that have something to tell you and they want to pull you and they're helping you to think that you are reality and that they also have things to say and opinions and emotions and so you need to focus in the light that you have inside of your own soul and the way to do it is to meditate it's to do it with the dut it's to close your eyes and to breathe and when a person finds that inner quiet inside of himself then he can start hearing the voice of Hashem that is speaking to you. Because the mouth of Hashem is talking to you. And who are you? You need to find that you that you are. And Hashem will talk to you. And as long as your eyes are open, you're not yourself. As long as your mind is all of the time busy with what's going to happen and what people are going to say and what I'm supposed to do and what I'm going to do, you're not yourself. You're under too much stress and noise that you cannot be yourself. If someone now asks you a question, immediately you're thinking too much and you lose your true self immediately. In a second, what are you doing? Now you need to present yourself. So now you're thinking, what I'm going to say, and how I'm going to say it, and how I'm going to, and what going to, and what he going to think, and what going to, what's going to be the results of that, and what's going to happen because of that, and where it's going to lead. All of those thousands of thoughts are distracting you from the truth. It's not a problem to answer who you are. What's a problem? You can say your name, you can say your will, you can express yourself, it's not a problem. So why we don't do that so easily? Because we're afraid, because we're distracted, because our mind is in the world of lie, that the world of lie is full of dividings, is full of arguments and opinions that are pulling us to lose our mind from the truth. That nothing is important except of nullifying ourselves to the real existence of the Creator and become one with Him. Force your will to be like God's will. 
Whatever you want, Hashem. A big righteous man said once that if a person wants to live eternal life, so he needs to accept on himself to live every moment of his life forever. Means now that you're under crazy amounts of pressure and you feel so lost, if you're going to accept it with love, okay, I'm ready to stay like that forever. So then you live your life with the Creator and you live eternal life. But if you're arguing and you're refusing and you can't accept it and you hate it and you don't want that, so then you divided yourself from the divine will of the Creator. And you don't live eternal life. Because you live in the world of lies. Because you're refusing to accept God's will. So now a person is saying, so do you mean that I'm supposed to suffer? Should I suffer for the rest of my life? Now you don't want me to do anything to change? No, not at all. If you're going to listen to your inner voice, you're going to hear that the Creator is telling you from inside that there are times for peace and there are times for war, that there are times to rest and there are times to work, that there are times that you need to sit and be quiet and there are times that you need to stand up and shout and to scream and to fight and to argue. But you're going to do all of those things out of the connection to the truth and not because you're scared. And not because that you're lying to yourself that you need to achieve something and that if you won't do it, you won't have it. And all of those false assumptions that base on lack of faith and on lack of understanding of the real existence of the Creator. That He is moving the stars and He is moving the weather and He is moving the world and He is moving people and He puts thoughts in the hearts and in the minds of people. And he puts words in the mouths of people and you know it. Because you found yourself talking words of Torah that you could never imagine. How can it be that I have ever spoken words that are so holy and coming from such a holy source? And in another time you saw that like the donkey of Bil'am you were talking such words that it's impossible to understand. How can it be that the father an adult, an educated person would say sh such nonsense. So you realize that Hashem controls your life. That sometimes Hashem is showing to you, I'm the king of mercy. And sometimes Hashem must show you that He's the king of judgments, the king of trial. And it's all coming to bring you back to that point of understanding there is a king. And the king, he runs the world. And he's on top of everything. Every single fly. Every single bird. Every leaf on every tree. Every grass. Every drop of water. Everything Hashem, he knows. Every particle of the creation. Every cell in the creation. Every atom is under the 100% control and private individual supervision of the master of the universe, that he created everything and everything includes in him, included in him. He's on top of everything. It's not that he's looking and taking decisions and saying yes on this and no on that and right and left and do and don't do. His will is being expressed in the world. The world runs by the will of Hashem. Now you want to know what Hashem's will is? Look! Look around! Because Hu Amar Vayehi Hu Tziva Vayamod He said that it's gonna be, it's gonna be. When He said there's gonna be light, there was light. When He said there's gonna be night, it was night. That's it! He said there's gonna be a man, suddenly there's a man standing in front of your eyes. And today when there's a man standing in front of your eyes, it's because that Hashem said 
they're going to be a man that's going to stand in front of your eyes. Because the Creator, Mechadesh Bechol Et, in every moment He's renewing Maaseh Bereshit, the creation, the act of creation. The creator of the world, we're calling him Bore Olam. He's creating the world. He's not the creator, the one that established, the one that created in the past. He did it. 6,000 years ago. No, no, no. We're talking about the creator that creates the world now in the present. That his name is Havaya Baruchu. He is the now, he is the present. He is now creating the world as He wish. His will reveals itself now in the creation. Now you can ask thousands on thousands, billions of questions. So what do you want to say? That He wanted Him to die? He wanted them to die? He wanted her to suffer? He wanted Him to be exiled? If you're going to say no, so you have a problem with your faith. So how can it be? People are being abused. People are suffering. People being tortured and then slaughtered. Thousands and millions of people being burnt in, in stoves in hell. What are you talking about? How can you say that it's all a shame? You don't need me to say. Hashem said it. Now when a person called me a few days ago and asked me a question, how can it be? I see such judgments in the world and it seems to me that Hashem Barach is abusive. What should I do? Hard question, right? What can you answer? I answered the judgments of the Creator seems to us that they're abusive. And if you want to change the judgments, so you need to talk to the Creator and to convince Him like a good lawyer, like a good person that can speak, to cancel those judgments and to reveal His kindness. But to ignore or to deny or to lie to yourself or to run away from the problems, it won't do no good. First of all, you have reality. And in reality, the Creator, He is the Creator. And He runs the universe. And He decides on every movement in the world. Nothing can move one inch without the will of the Creator. No one can think without Hashem's will. Hashem puts the thoughts in the mind of the person. Hashem puts the will when King David said, gorali, the Metsudot David is explaining the word, words of that verse, gorali, you supported my destiny to believe in you. Even my faith in you is a result of your support in me to believe in you. You gave me my faith. It's written on Abraham Avinu that he said, that he believed in Hashem, and the verse is saying, Amen ba Hashem, that he believed in Hashem, lo and he felt that it was charity from heaven that Hashem gave him charity to believe in him. I believe in you, Hashem, it's only because that you decided to show yourself to me. If you would choose to hide your face from me, I would be running for my life. I would go to seek for food. I wouldn't have no faith. I wouldn't have no trust in you. I would go and hunt. I would go and look for food. I would be so hungry and terrified that I would run in the streets like crazy. But because that you gave me faith and you revealed your patience and your love and your kindness to me, so by that you gave me hope and by that you gave me trust to count on you. And you gave me the tool of prayer to stand and to ask for all of my needs from you. And because of that, my mind is settled. 
and quiet and I can breathe and I can relax and I don't need to hunt and I don't need to kill to protect myself because I can understand that Hashem will protect me because Hashem Yitbarach is protecting me because if I'm alive and I know that I have enemies so it means that Hashem saved me how can it be that a person that has millions of enemies he will survive if not that Hashem, the Creator, protected him and every single one of us, the Gemara is testifying and telling us you have 1,000 from one side and 10,000 from the other side. Every person got at least 11,000 enemies that are surrounding him in every moment of his life. So if you live in such a dangerous world with thousands and thousands of enemies in every moment of your life, and the Gemara is saying that if the eyes of the person would be open to see those demons that are threatening him, that are desiring to eat him alive, to kill him, to slaughter him, to make him crazy, to make him lose his mind, he would lose his mind just from the fear of seeing all of those enemies surrounding him. All of those outsiders that are trying and willing to destroy him. But... Hashem Yitbarach, the creator of the universe, is saying to you, relax, take a deep breath, I'm with you. Even if you walk in the valley of death, I'm with you. When you go to the lowest places, I'm protecting you. And we need to put our mind to understand the greatness of the creator. In a physical eyes, flesh and bones, you cannot see the truth. When a person is driving in a car and he now drives too fast and he can't hold stop the car and he feels like he's about to crash, he's about to do a horrible accident and he feels like, oh, I'm dying. You don't know really if he's going to die or he won't. You don't know. But the truth is, that there are angels that are standing and they're clear, you cannot see them. But they're standing and protecting you. And the car will crash and two people can die and two people will live. And the person that was the driver, he, nothing gonna happen to him. And someone that was, that was safe <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the back seat and everything was supposed to be perfect and he, and he died. And how are those things are happening? Because you don't know what goes on around you. You can't see the protection of the Creator on His creations. And the way that the Creator is supervising on us is 100% precise. And bringing us to the completion of our mission. To bring everyone to the purpose of His creation. To complete our faith and our trust in Him. That we will serve Him out of joy with a clear and calm mind that we will put the main things, the will of the Creator, in the peak of our priorities. First of all, to understand what God wants. What Hashem really wants from me as an individual, as a person. What is the mission of my life? What should I do with my time? What should I do with my power, with my talents, with my ability, with my money? With my memory? What should I do with my relationship, with my connection, with people? What should I do with all of those properties that Hashem gave me? With all of those treasures that Hashem gave me? With my ability to understand and to think and to smell and to taste and to feel and, and to touch and to hold and to lift and to give and to move and to drive? What should I do with those powers that Hashem gave me? If you're always going to open yourself to the external world, you will be disconnected from the real truth of your creation. Because people will always have more and more opinions. And every person got at least two or three opinions about every subject. So you cannot consult with people. You can never, gonna you can never find your answer between people. 
You must ask Hashem Adricheni Ba'amitecha. I need you to guide me in the path of your truth. King David asked that. Adricheni Ba'amitecha. Teach me what is your truth. You want to say that King David didn't know the truth? King David didn't know what's the Jewish rule, what the halacha was. Lamdeni chukecha, teach me your rules. What is David Amalek, King David? He knew everything. He was the biggest posek. He was an amazing, huge genius, Talmid Chacham. He knew all the rules, all of the halachot. All of the Torah was revealed to him. He wrote the, the book of Tehillim. We're talking about a genius. That in one night, the Gemara is saying that he was learning in one night the amount of Torah that Rabbi Akiva or Rabbi Meir Baal Anes or Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, huge righteous people from a later generation, would learn in 100 years. King David learned that amount of 100 years of learning of those huge righteous people in one night from mid midnight till dawn. In six hours, he would learn an amount of Torah that a genius like Rabbi Meir Balanes, like Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, like Hillel Zaken, like Shammai, would learn in 100 years. And he's asking Hashem, teach me your rules. What? You know the rules. You don't know the rules? No, he knows that he needs to be in touch with Hashem to know Hashem's will. If your wife told you seven years ago that she wants something, it doesn't mean that today she wants the same thing. Seven years passed until today. So Hashem Yidbarach commanded us and gave us the Torah. Yes, nothing changed. You think so? Do you really think nothing changed? What do you mean nothing changed? Today you have microwave. So you need to say psak on microwave. 200 years ago there was no microwave. Today you can switch the light in a second with your finger. You can do like that. Clap your hands, there is light. Can you do that? Can't you do that? Questions that you need to renew the laws for today. You need to explain. And of course the foundations, the roots of all of the Jewish rules, of all of the will of the Creator being revealed to us in that endless Torah, in the amazing Bible, and also by heart by the righteous people that gave the wisdom from one generation to the next. But in every generation, the righteous people got the permission to explain and to translate and to open the will of Hashem to the next level, to the next generation, that people will understand what it's all about. And Hashem is saying, I have things that are in the peak of my priorities. And for you, they're minor. You don't care about them at all. And things that you took and made them to look so important are tiny things for me, Hashem is saying. So how a person going to know what is important and what is not? What is so precious and what is so cheap? What is so important that you should keep? And what is not as important? So he will say, you know what? I'm going to do it all. I'm going to be so strict. I'm going to do the most that I can. But you cannot do that. Because you have family. You have friends. They don't have the same abilities that you have. And the truth, I'm going to tell you a secret. You're not aware to your own powers at all, even. Let's say you want to say that you're able and you don't care. You don't know. You don't know if you really care or don't care. You're not aware to yourself. You're not connected to who that you really are. The fact that you're able to sit and to learn for 10 hours and you don't care if you ate or didn't ate, doesn't make you righteous. Doesn't really make you pure. It's a joke. It's easy. Those are easy things. To sit every day for 8 hours in Beit Midrash, 16 hours every day in Beit Midrash, that's easy. That's easy. 
That's the most easiest life that a person can choose for himself. And if in that easy, easy, super easy, smooth life, a person going to cry and whine and going to tell you how much he's sacrificing in the tent of Torah and he's learning for hours. <laughs> That's a liar. That's a liar. That's a liar. Is there something that is more sweet and easy and relaxing and nice than sitting with your friends every day for 10 hours and just chatting and learning Torah? Nothing more easy than that. The most easiest life in the world. Easier than skiing all day long. Easier than eating. Easier than drinking, than enjoying, watching movies. It's the best in the world. Sitting and just learning Torah all day long, it's heaven. It's heaven. It's not a challenge. That's not a challenge. Let's see you believe in Hashem Barach when you need to work and when you need to pick up your children and when you need to smile to every person in the street and when you need not to have foreign thoughts when you see women and when you see millionaires and when you see billionaires and when you're driving in, a, in, a, in, a, in Iraq and people are driving in fancy cars and let you, let's see you Loving everyone and caring about everyone and thinking about everyone and don't forget about your wife and thinking about her and never being late and trying to do the best and still finding time to learn Torah and really to keep all Torah mitzvot and never to miss a prayer and always to eat only kosher and always to be happy with what that you're going through in life and also that your children are going to learn and know names of animals and names of trees and names of countries and lands, and not just to throw them in a Jewish school and to forget about them, and, okay, I'll see you before the wedding. Oh, you came? Oh, yeah, it's three months. All oh, right, yeah, welcome. Every three months they're coming from Yeshiva. Hi, Shalom Aleichem, welcome. How are you? How was Yeshiva? Okay. Oh, I'm here. That's too easy. That's not the truth. The truth is that your heart will be with your child when he's in yeshiva. That you're not going to take tutors, that they're going to solve your problems with your children. Okay, you know, I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay. I'm going to spare my, my headache. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay. How much? Okay, I'm going to pay. Avodat Hashem is when you sit with your child and you learn. And if you're not able, and if you don't have that power, so okay, at least you need to care about your child. You need to remember your child. You need to be with your child. You need to pray for your child. You need to think about him. You need to call him. You need to be in touch with him. You need to speak to him. You need to cry for him in heaven. They asked Rabbi Vadya Yosef, how come all of your children are learning so much Torah? He said, I was sitting and crying until I would fill my kippah with tears that they will become Talmidei Chachamim, that they will learn Torah. When you care about your child, so you care about your child. You don't solve your problems with him. When you care about your family, about your wife, about Hashem, so you're in touch with them. Your wife is not a problem. She's not a source of issues that you need to, to shush them, to shove them to another corner. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, I know she's got that issue. No, she doesn't got that issue. Hashem Barach is talking to you from the walls, from the mouths of people. Hashem is rebuking you and waking you up. Wake up! Wake up, you're asleep. If she's got complaints on you, it means that Hashem Barach chose to reveal his complaints to you, on you, through that poor woman that now is speaking out of her sorrow. The sorrow that you caused but by not paying attention. By not being sensitive enough. By not keeping God's will. And you blocked the light from her. Now the sun is going to have complaints on the moon. Why the moon is not shining like the sun. Okay, great. Whose job is it to light the moon if not the sun? You have a rabbi and a student. Now the student doesn't understand 
He can't understand what the Rebbe is teaching him. The Rebbe is teaching and teaching for hours. And the student, he's stuck. He can't learn. Whose problem is it? Whose fault is it? Who did not complete his job? The teacher or the student? I say this to the teacher. What can the student do except of coming every day to school? He came to school. Now he can't understand who you need to speak with, who you need to talk to. The teacher. Go to the Rebbe. Speak with him. Now your wife, she's not happy. Do you remember on what you signed in the Ktuba when you got married? That you're going to make her happy. That you're going to take care of all of her needs. Now Hashem is not supplying. I hear you. So you have a problem with Hashem. Great. But why you have problems with your wife, I don't understand. Why you're upset on her if she's tired? If she's tired. Why you're upset on her if she's hungry when she's hungry? Is it her fault that she's getting tired or getting hungry? She's a human being. What do you want from her? Now you have an issue. Okay, you have a problem. You don't know how to give her that time to rest. So you don't know how to supply the food or the wisdom or the advice. All of the things that she demands. So you have a problem with the Creator, with the ones that's above you. How come you have a problem with your child that is hungry? You have a problem with your wife that she needs you? That she wants to have a friend? You should have a problem or with yourself that you're not being friendly. Or with Hashem that doesn't let you be friendly with your wife. So go and solve your problems with Hashem. Don't blame her on the fact that she needs a friend. Because when you took her to be your wife, you took that responsibility on yourself to be her best man, her best friend. To go with her and to help her and to love her and to respect her. And to show her what the good of this world is all about. Now if you're not able to do your job, it's your problem. It's not her problem. How can you blame her? You're not watering your flower and now you're going to complain on him that he died? You need to be crazy. You need to water your garden. And if you don't have water, so you need to call someone. So you need to call Hashem. Call Hashem al You need to call Hashem on water. You need to call Hashem on everything you need. You need to call Hashem to ask for Hashem Idvarach to reveal His loving kindness, His endless love on you. And to open the faucets of bounty that all the channels of bounty and good and kindness will come down to the world. So you can never be upset on no one. And you must solve your problems with the Creator. So how you solve your problems with the Creator? You must go and talk to Him. And how are you going to talk to Him? Like you talk to your best friend. How you talk to your best friend? Words from the heart. You're just going to tell him everything that you have on your heart. Because he's your best friend in the world. So with him you need to feel comfortable to tell him whatever you feel. Like King David. He's saying to Hashem, I'm afraid, I'm scared, I don't know, I'm confused. I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, I don't have no advice. Please save me, please protect me, please guard, please help, please save, please redeem, please, please protect, please I don't know what to do, I'm worried, I'm afraid. That's how you speak to the Creator, that He is the one that brings also the enemies. Like that Yirmiyahu the prophet is standing in front of Hashem and telling Him, there are no enemies, you're shooting your arrows to my kidneys. You're killing me. Why can't you say that to Hashem? You're too proud. You're too proud to tell Hashem in Barach. Oh, that hurt Hashem. That was insulting Hashem. That hurt me Hashem. Why can't you say that to Hashem? 
Hashem, he knows that he just hurt you. Hashem, he knows. Ask him why. Hashem, I'm supposed to be your best friend. I'm your child. Why you hurt me so much, Hashem? Why you did that to me, Hashem? What have I done? I upset you. I disappointed you. Something happened. Do you want to tell me something? What's the conclusion? What's the wisdom behind all of that? What was the hint? I don't understand. It's too heavy to carry. It's too heavy to understand. Can you please explain to me in a way that I'm going to understand? Hashem, what do you want from me, Hashem? If you don't have that point of honesty, a relationship that based on honesty, on friendship, on honor, that you can tell Hashem your heart, that you can open your heart and your mouth and express your emotions and your will and your holy desire to come closer to Him, so you don't have no relationship with Him at all. You're divided. You're angry, you're upset, you're frustrated, and you're backing off. It's not for me. I don't understand. I don't get it. And that's it. You walk away. If you walked away from Hashem, means that you lost your hope in Hashem, means you don't understand who you're talking about, who you're involved with. Because Hashem, He wants to bring redemption to this world. And redemption means something beyond nature. Today we are under nature because our eyes are open to the world of life. So we think that the supervision of nature is the supervision that supplies food, money, health. Oh, I'm not eating right. So maybe because of that. I'm not drinking right, I'm not sleeping right, maybe because of this, maybe because of that. And you live your life under the rules of si system of rules of nature. And you're putting yourself in that place because you're opening your eyes to see the world. But if you're going to close your eyes <coughs> and going to look inside, you're going to see that inside you don't have no dividings. Betoch ami anochi yoshevet. Hashem is saying, I live inside of my people. After we build the temple, from that day and on, Hashem lives inside of us. Inside of them, not inside the temple. What's the temple? Woods and stones? You are much more important than the temple. The Gemara is saying, how stupid are those people that are standing when someone takes the Sefer Torah? They're respecting the Sefer Torah. But when a real righteous man is walking, ah, who is he that I'm going to stand up? You know who he is? The Gemara is saying, this is a live Sefer Torah. That's a live Bible. A righteous man is much more important than a Bible, than a book. Because he lives the Torah. He lives with Hashem. The Gemara is saying, How stupid are those people? Foolish are those people that don't have the respect to real righteous people to understand how holy they are, how close they are to the Creator. That's how they became righteous threw themselves under the legs of the Creator, ran to serve Him, didn't care about their power, about how much money they're going to make, not thinking about how tired they are, if they were sweating or not, if they had time to learn, didn't have time to learn, if they had time to make money, didn't have time to make money, had time to sleep, didn't have time to sleep. They didn't care about those things. They cared only about one thing. What does Hashem want from me? What can I do for Hashem? So when you see people like those, you need to respect them with all of your power, with all of your passion, to be ready to open yourself to every commandment that the Creator will command you in the present. Now Hashem, what do you want from me? Now what you want me to do with my power? 
Now what you want me to do with my wisdom? Now what you want me to do with my thoughts? When you're going to think like that, you're going to live your life in an eternal way with the Creator. Every moment of your life is going to be a moment of development. going to be a moment of connecting yourself in a new level to the Creator. The way to do it is only to close your eyes and to open the eyes of your mind, to think, to fill with your heart, to try to understand the real meaning of life. What does Hashem want from me? <clears throat> What is the real will of the Creator for me right now? As an individual, as a person, as a holy soul, as a messenger of the Creator, what should I do with my life? What do you want me to do, Hashem? If you're just going to open your eyes and going to think a little bit, you're going to see that you can make such amazing changes in this world. You can reach out to so many souls. You can save lives of millions of people. If you're just going to use the tools that God gave you, what that is lying in front of you, things that Hashem already prepared for you. Just the list of people that you have in your phone. If you're just going to call those people and tell them hi, one after the other, call them. To everyone that you can call, in your list of contacts, in your phone, send them a message. How are you? I was thinking about you. Pray on them. Generally, say a general prayer on all of your people, on all of your friends. And then send them a message. I care about you. I was thinking about you today. I prayed for you today. You know the effect of that message on those people? You know how much good it's going to plant in their hearts? You can never imagine. You can never imagine. How easy it is to go and to sleep with that $20 bill in your pocket. You don't need that today, right? You can go to sleep with it or without it. It wouldn't change a thing. That $50 bill that you have, that $100, really? If you would lose that $100 bill, where is it? I can't find it. Now I'm asking you, what happened to your life? Now you lost that $100 bill. You lost it. You're not going to see it anymore in your life. You lost it. You forgot it somewhere in the bus, in the train. Now, what happened to your life? Nothing. Literally nothing. Not a thing happened to your life. And even if you really needed that $100, Even in a situation that that $100 were so important and you were holding them in your inner pocket, under your jacket, whatever, and you lost that $100, you know you're going to make it even without that $100. You're not going to die because of that $100. So a little bit more stress, a little bit more. Okay, so you're going to go out, in and out from the house. After two hours, you're going to solve that problem. So nothing happened, right? You're going to find a solution to that $100, right? So why you need those $100 in your pocket? So why not to feed a family that for that family, that $100 bill is a life saving? It's going to pay their electricity bill. It's going to pay another week for, for the children in school. It's going to buy new underpants for all of the children, for, 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 for all of the family. It's going to buy food for Shabbos, for a full, full, full family. Do you understand what $100 can mean to someone else? It can give life to family. It can be, we give books for next year for school. You can buy spiritual amazing books that will inspire thousands of people. How many CDs of inspiring classes you can buy and go and spread them and save lives of people. There was a woman that came to the Holy Land. She made Aliyah. She came to Israel one year ago, one year and a half ago. And she told me, I received one of your CDs 
some student of one student of mine, he took my classes and he was making music and he just put them one on the other. Barely with editing, a simple CD. He took the music, he took my classes and he, he mixed them together. One plus one. And that's it. A whole CD with music and my classes. She said, I received your CD. She never saw me before. She just received that CD from someone. And she said, that CD changed my life. I heard that CD more than 100 times, she said. And she started doing tshuva. She was secular. She was far from faith. She was divorced in the second time. And she heard that CD and it changed her life. And she started wearing modest and made, made aliyah and came with her child to the Holy Land. And it's one CD. We're selling that CD in our website in $2, I think. So think about what you can do. What you can do. But it's more comfortable to go to sleep with that $100, who knows? It's probably, I'm going to use them tomorrow. But if you're going to use them today, Hashem is going to give you another $100 tomorrow. Because you live in the present. You don't live tomorrow. Who knows if you're going to wake up tomorrow. But if now you're going to take those $2, those $10, those $20, that 15 minutes that you have, Instead of just wasting your time and being lazy and just going to do amazing things with your power, with the tools that God gave you, you can change the life of thousands and millions of people around the world. Once I was giving classes to seven people, to eight people, and then we start uploading those classes to YouTube. And suddenly it was 27 people. And when we reached 49 and 50 people, we were dizzy. We didn't, wow, we were so, we were fascinated. We were so excited. 50 people, 70 people. When we reached 70 views on every video, we didn't know what to do with ourselves from the success, from the joy that we had. Me and my students, my friends that were learning together. And today, more than 150,000 people are watching my classes online every month. 150,000 people every month on all outlets of social media. On Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on our website, on SoundCloud, on whatever you can mention. Everything. We're everywhere. Why? Because Hashem wanted. So now today we're crying why we don't have million views on every video. And we're crying on it. Why? Because of those million people that are still out there and looking for hope and don't know what to do. But if you're going to share and 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 not only watching that amazing video, just also going to send it be the most annoying person in, in, in your mobile. Be the most annoying person in your email list. Be the most... An, be like Moti. Yeah. Be the most annoying person in, in Monsi. <laughs> and then you're going to bring life to all of those people that are too embarrassed to ask, that don't know what to do, and that they don't know and don't have that connection that you have. And then you're going to open that channel for them and you're going to water them and they're going to become your children the merit of your of their success will be theirs of their success will be yours because you provided that light that message to them we're about to open the fifth emuna center now in california And Hashem Barach is helping to expand and to do amazing things in the world. And it's not because that we are so great. It's only because that we found the will of Hashem. 
and we're throwing ourselves for Him with our project, and we're serving Him with our project. That's why it's growing. That's why it's expanding. More than half of our followers are non-Jews. More than half of our viewers, of our followers, are women. Thousands and thousands of families in Texas, in Europe, students in Spain, students in Dubai, in Singapore. People are WhatsApping me from Singapore. I never met them. How did you reach? How did you saw? How? On YouTube. On Facebook. Hashem opened for us that connection today to use the social media. And to go forward with revealing the light of the Creator to the world, to the nations. To reveal the true will of the Creator. To show everyone that they are important. That they are amazing souls. And we're doing it. When you're flying in the speed of light, so you should understand that you are the light. When you're running with the will of Hashem, and you're keeping God's will, so you became one with Hashem. You are Hashem. You became one with Him. Moshe Ish Ha Elohim. The man of God. That's it. People cannot look at him anymore. Like you cannot look and stare at God, you cannot stare at Moshe. Why? Because Moshe, Hashem, same letters. Same one. Who is Moshe? Hashem. Who is King David? Hashem. Try to fight with David, you're going to find Hashem. Try to attack Moshe, you're going to meet Hashem. Why? Because they're one. He never moves from his rabbi. He never moves from God's will. So they're together. A soldier in the army is part of the army. It's the army. You're serving Hashem. You're with Hashem. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all He. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.